radiation portal monitor is a monitor that's used at uh, various uh, entry points and exit points to the United States. Instrument used to measure primarily radiation in crates, for cargo, for vehicles, at, at borders, ports and even in airports uh, for pedestrians. These portal monitors are basically large boxes that uh, you would drive through, for instance, if you were going uh, to Mexico. Uh, as you approach the border, you'd see uh, these boxes on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of your vehicle. And you'd pass through those such that uh, they could passively determine whether you're carrying any radioactive material. In the radiation portal monitors, they have two types of detectors in there. Uh, one detector is to monitor gamma radiation and the other is to monitor uh, neutron radiation. One of the problems that these portals experience is that uh, there are a number of natural emitting uh, radioactive materials out there, particularly that emit gamma radiation. As a matter of fact, with the gamma portion, there are a lot of uh, false alarms. Our product is based on doing neutron detection. In many applications, these counters are exposed to, to gamma radiation fields and you have to be able to discriminate between neutron radiation and gamma radiation. You don't want to generate a false alarm in the presence of gamma radiation or, or mischaracterize a gamma field as a neutron source. And gamma discrimination is very important. Anytime that a Customs and Border Protection agent gets an alarm, a neutron alarm at a point of entry to the U.S., uh, it elicits very strong reactions, so we wanted to make absolutely sure that it was a valid alarm. There are very few materials that actually emit neutrons. And those are very specific to uh, very de small defined items. One of them happens to be a special nuclear weapon, an atomic bomb. For years, the uh, helium-3 was the preferred material to be used in neutron detectors. Uh, they have very good gamma discrimination, very high neutron sensitivity. The only problem is it's a limited supply. So the primary source of helium-3 over the years has come from our nuclear weapon stockpile. Most of the helium-3 that's used today, matter of fact, all the helium-3 that's used today, actually comes from tritium production for the weapons program. Over the past few years, since 9-11, the uh, demand for helium-3 has gone from probably around uh, 10,000 liters per year to up to 80, even 100,000 liters per year. And the U.S. stockpile was itself alone was about 200,000 liters. So it wouldn't take very long for that stockpile to be depleted. So as we started to look at what uh, we could do to address the helium-3 shortage, we recognized that the radiation portal monitor was the most important uh, alternate that was needed uh, with the most urgency. And that's where we focused our energies. GE Reuter Stokes has been building boron 10 line proportional counters for uh, many years for use in the nuclear power industry. For startup and operation of uh, pressurized water reactors and also research reactors. So we've been making uh, these detectors for more than 40 years. Boron 10 is uh, an isotope of boron and it's one of those rare materials that when a neutron interacts with it, it produces charged particles which we can use to actually detect uh, the fact that the neutron has interacted. Boron 10 is a naturally occurring material uh, that's actually mined from the uh, ground and it's very plentiful. It's one of the most plentiful elements there is in the world. The, the main difference between a helium-3 detector and a boron-10 detector is where the neutron actually interacts. In the helium-3 detector, it interacts with the gas. In the boron-10 detector, it interacts with the coating on the inside layer. From that point on, though, the operation of both those detectors is very similar. The initial goal was to meet the radiological performance of the detectors themselves, which is a neutron response with a gamma rejection. Our uh, boron-10 uh, solution uh, was initially tested at uh, Pacific Northwest uh, National Laboratory to uh, validate the fact that we could achieve uh, adequate neutron sensitivity. We wanted to verify that the boron-10 performance um, was comparable to our existing products on the market and what we historically have performed at. We've actually met or exceeded the ANSI 4235 specification. Uh, shock and vibration and temperature to neutron sensitivity and gamma ray insensitivity and uh, everything you can imagine. We've done vibration testing uh, beyond what the ANSI spec is um, to ensure that uh, if there was some sort of unusual characteristic with the customer's cabinet that we would easily meet the overall system requirements. Also we 
continuously look at the environmental conditions and the way that the ANSI spec is to ensure that humidity and temperature extremes are easily met. Validation is very important because we want to ensure that when cargo that does not contain neutrons passes through these systems, you do not want a false alarm. But we also want to make sure that when neutron emitting cargo passes through the system, that you do get an alarm. The results are that we met and exceeded all the requirements. We've gone through initial testing at the factory, validation testing at the uh, government labs, and from there it's actually gone out in the field and uh, successfully performed for field testing to the point where we're now being deployed for some programs. We manufacture uh, neutron detection modules that are uh, inserted into radiation portal monitors. These modules uh, can come in many different sizes because the radiation portal monitors come in many different sizes. There are some monitors that are quite long and would uh, take a uh, system that might be six feet in length, but there are others that are much shorter. We make a custom solution that fits whatever uh, your particular application requires. Not only size, but also the sensitivity that's required for that particular application.